Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at the Docker architecture and also some essential commands that you will almost end up using every day. In today's session, we are going to talk about the most fundamental command you will use in Docker, which is your Docker run command. We will start with the absolute basics and then we will also explore some of the most common flags that give you control over your containers. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. Now, let's first understand the Docker run command. And to do that, we will open up our terminal. So here I have my terminal and I have my uh, Docker installed. All right. Now, the docker run command has a very simple syntax at its core. So let's say if I say docker run, so this is the syntax that you have. So docker run options, the image name, command, and then any arguments that you want to pass. So the most basic thing we need is an image. Think of your image as a blueprint. We will talk more about your images in the upcoming session. The docker run command takes this image as a blueprint and builds a running instance of it, which we call a container. One of the most famous and simple images is hello world. It's the hello world of the container world. Let's run that image. So we will run this Docker run hello world. So here I'm giving the name of the image that I want. And look at that. If this is your first time, you will notice a few things happen. First, Docker printed unable to find image hello world latest locally. This means Docker looked for the image on our local machine and it couldn't find it. So it went ahead and pulled it from the default public registry, which is our Docker hub. You will see the status here, download a newer image for hello world latest message. Finally, the container started. The sole purpose of this container is to execute a small program that prints out this uh, uh, friendly message explaining the steps that just happened. It ran its job, printed the output and then it exited. So in its simplest form, Docker run will pull the image if needed, then it will create the container, start the container and then attach to the output. It's an all in one command to go for an image name to a running process. Now, hello world is nice, but most applications aren't that simple. They need to be interactive, run in the background, store data or be accessible from our network. That's where flags come in. Let's look at some of the most essential ones. The first flag we have is the hyphen IT flag. Many containers like ones running Ubuntu or Alpine Linux are designed for us to interact with them via a shell. To get an interactive shell inside the container, we use two flags, hyphen i and then hyphen t. Hyphen i or hyphen hyphen interactive, this keeps the standard input open, allowing you to type the commands inside the container. And then hyphen t or hyphen tty uh, allows a sudo tty, essentially giving us a proper terminal output. They are almost always used together as hyphen it. Let's run a Ubuntu container interactively. So here, let's run this Docker run and I'm using this hyphen IT flag and then the name of the image. And again, you can see unable to find the image locally. It is downloading the image for us and then it will start the container. So here, this is my container. So you can look at the prompt. You are now root user inside a brand new minimal Ubuntu container. Your prompt here, it has a unique container ID. And let's try a few commands here. So let's say ls slash. So this is from the container. Likewise, let's say slash etc slash OS release. And you can see I'm able to see all the OS related information. So you can see the file system of the container. You can see the OS release file. And this confirms we are inside the Ubuntu. And this is an isolated environment. Now to exit and stop, the container just type exit over here so we'll run that and now i am back to my ec2 instance so the container has now stopped because the main process we were attached to the shell it has exited 
So that's basically your hyphen IT flag. So at any point when you want to interact with your container, we will use this hyphen IT flag. The next flag we the next flag we have is the hyphen D or detached flag. Now, what if you don't want to be attached to the container? What if we want to run it in the background like a server? That's what the hyphen D or hyphen hyphen detached flag is used for. Let's run a nginx web server in the background. So we'll use this docker run hyphen D and then the name of the image and done. Notice how we got our EC2 prompt back immediately. So docker started the nginx container and ran it in the background or in the detached mode. We can see running containers using this docker ps command. So here you can see this is the nginx container, the nginx image that I have used and you can see this was created 16 seconds ago and this has been running since 15 seconds. So we are running it in the deta detached mode. So here using this docker ps command, you will see a list with your running nginx container. Uh, you can see the uh, ID, you can see the status and also the port information. Now if you want to stop this container, we can simply use this docker stop and then the container ID which will stop the container for us. So now if I run this docker ps, you can say I no longer see that container. Next we have the hyphen hyphen name flag. So referring to the containers using the container ID is cumbersome. We can give them a friendly custom name using the hyphen hyphen flag. Let's rerun our nginx container with a name. So let's say we will do this docker run hyphen D and we will give it a name. So let's say my web server and then the name of the image. Now, instead of using the container ID, we can manage the container using this custom name that we have assigned to our container. So if I run this docker ps command once again, here you can see my container is running and you can see the name that we have given. So this is my custom name. Now, instead of using this container ID, we can use this um, custom name to manage our container. So let's go ahead and stop this. So we will say docker stop and then the name of the container that we have given. Uh, sorry, there's a typo. And done. So you can see I don't have the container. So this is much easier to remember and script. Container names must be unique. So you can't have two running container named by the same name, like in this case, this name. So make sure they are unique. The next flag we have is the hyphen P flag. Now our nginx container which is running our nginx this listens on port 80. But how do we access it from our host machine like let's say you deploy an application. How do we access that application? The container has its own isolated network and we will need to map a port on our host to the port inside the container. For example here let's say let me restart this. Um, container uh, so let me give it a new name and uh, docker ps so here you can see the port information so even if i try hitting this so let's say localhost at port 80 you can see it does not work because the container network is isolated so we will need to map a port from our local machine to the port inside the container and for this, we can use the hyphen P flag. The syntax is very simple. We use this hyphen uh, P and then your host port, like your local machine port number, and then the container port number. Let's map port 8080 on our host to port 80 in a new Nginx container. So we will do a docker run hyphen P let's uh, give it a name so let's say nginx container and then we will do our port mapping so the first number that you see here that is your host machine like your local machine and then the colon 80 would be your container port number and then the name of the image oh sorry uh, this should be hyphen d and my container is created and now you can see here the port mapping 
So this is without the port mapping and this is with the port mapping. Now we can access our Nginx from our local machine on the port number that we have defined. So here you can see this is my Nginx output. This is fundamental for making containerized services accessible. Next we have the hyphen V flag. By default all files created inside a container are stored in a writable layer that is tied to the container's lifecycle. And if you remove the container, the data is also gone. So by default, uh, whatever the data that you have, the data will be available as long as the container is up and running. If you stop the container or if you, if you remove the container, the data will be lost. But how do you make your data persistent? This is where we make use of your hyphen V flag. So the most common syntax of this would be hyphen V and then your host path, host path colon container path. Okay, so this is the most common uh, syntax with your hyphen V flag. So what that this does is this mounts your directory from your local host machine into the container machine. So let's say I have a website in a folder on my host at uh, let's say this path. So let's say we will go here and uh, maybe we will create this um, my website and let's say we will go to that and maybe we will create a simple index.html file and let's say this is a custom web app showing demo for volumes so let me save this so here I have my uh, file on my host machine now I can run a nginx container and mount this particular folder to replace the default so here uh, this is the default uh, output that you see so I can replace this with my custom index.html file by mounting this folder to my container so let's see how we can do this so we will create one more container so docker run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name let's say my uh, site hyphen p and let's say this time we'll go with 80 colon 80 and then we will use the volume so hyphen v and the path so it is my website um, and then we will say colon inside your container so it will be user share nginx slash html and then the name of your image so this should start a new container for me so you can see the port mapping and now if you try hitting this you can see there is my custom page that is being shown so this will help you to persist your data so now even if i stop the container my data would still be available here on my local machine and i can start a new container and i can simply mount this folder and i will get the same data back so persistent data can be crucial for multiple things it can be crucial for databases application config and user generated content to recap hyphen it is for interactive containers hyphen d is for background services hyphen hyphen name is for manageable identifiers hyphen p is for network access and hyphen v is for data persistence master these five flags and you will be able to run the vast majority of containerized applications and that brings us to the end of the session in the next session, we will talk about how to manage our containers and how we can inspect our containers. If you found this session helpful, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and subscribe so you don't miss the next part of the series. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.